Well, good morning, everyone. It is indeed a pleasure to be here. Uh, in May, the Conservative Party of Canada launched a parallel defence policy review consultation process to hold the government to account and to ensure Canadians' ideas would be accurately reflected in the government's final report. This morning, uh, Pierre and I uh, dropped off our report, which has been circulated uh, for you, uh, to the Minister of National Defence. Now, our own consultations were, ne were necessary because the Liberals were quick to change defence policy on their own terms. They immediately withdrew Canada's CF-18s from the fight against ISIS and slashed $3.7 billion from the defence budget. Now, our Conservative caucus held over 50 roundtables across the country and collected over 700 online submissions. I am thankful to the thousands of Canadians that helped inform our findings and recommendations, and I thank our Conservative colleagues uh, in both the House and the Senate for their participation in the Defence Policy Review. Now, a, sem a central theme from our consultations quickly emerged, and that is that our men and women in uniform are the Canadian Armed Forces' most valuable asset. We heard from Canadians that the government has a responsibility to ensure that the members of, Canadian, of the Canadian Armed Forces are properly trained, equipped and cared for both during and after their service. Now one of the great concerns expressed by participants during our roundtables was regarding the predetermined policies that has been trickling out of the Minister of National Defence and the Prime Minister's offices over the past 12 months. The Liberals have made significant policy changes while simultaneously holding a review. They withdrew Canadian fighter jets from the fight against ISIS. They made significant budget cuts and committed 600 of our Canadian troops to an undefined peacekeeping mission in Africa, all the while their consultations are still ongoing. Now, these decisions contrast the views of a majority of Canadians that we spoke to who believe that the, the Canada's defence policy and the utilisation of the Canadian Armed Forces should be primarily focused on the safety and security of Canadians and the defence of North America. This highlights one of the strategic flaws on the Liberal Defence Review that was pointed out to us. Um, the review was conducted in isolation. Now, this, we heard and we also studied the examples that were done in both Australia and the United Kingdom. And when they wrote their right papers, they did them concurrently while they looked at foreign policy and homeland security uh, and, and they did their own reviews in those areas because foreign policy and homeland security will inform defense policy. Now, when troops are deployed to an area where they face risks, the government must be clear and transparent with the public and parliament regarding the objectives of the mission and the rules of engagement and how the mission relates to Canada's national interest. This can only be achieved if our armed forces are provided stable, predictable, and long-term funding. The government should work collaboratively with the defence industry and restructure the procurement process with the goal of reducing bureaucracy and removing politics from the decision-making process. As Conservatives, we continue to call on the Liberals to conduct the review process openly and transparently. All views of all Canadians should be accurately reflected in the final Defence Policy Review report and white paper not just those that align with the liberal ideological view of our military. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Pierre Paul Huss, uh, who will bring uh, comments en français. And as you all know, Pierre, of course, is a retired lieutenant colonel with the Canadian Armed Forces. And we're also joined by uh, Cheryl Gallant, who has uh, uh, been very active on the defense file and is the vice chair of the National Defense Committee. <coughs> Bonjour tout le monde, donc euh, bienvenue. Fait, comme James vient de mentionner, euh, j'ai fait partie des Forces armées canadiennes durant 22 ans. J'étais lieutenant colonel, donc euh, j'ai servi des années 87 à 2009. Donc pour moi, le, le, le système militaire est très connu. Et j'ai également vécu les périodes de, de Nations unies de l'époque et la transition vers l'Afghanistan. Donc je suis en mesure de voir et de comprendre exactement ce qui se passe et ce qu'on doit faire. Euh, actuellement, lors des tables rondes, nous avons fait plus de 50 tables rondes à travers le Canada. Nous avons reçu plus de 700 soumissions en ligne. Et clairement, comme Jim a mentionné, les Canadiens veulent avoir des forces canadiennes qui sont prêtes au combat, 
qui ne seront pas réduites à un rôle de maintien de la paix, qui est un faux maintien de la paix actuellement. Donc, il est important pour les Canadiens de comprendre que les missions dont le gouvernement veut faire ne sont pas des missions de maintien de la paix, mais des missions sous le contrôle des Nations unies, qui est totalement différent, car aujourd'hui, on ne parle plus de missions comme à Chypre à l'époque, ou le début de la Bosnie, qui a, vous le savez, transigé vers une mission de l'OTAN, car les Nations unies n'étaient pas en mesure de faire la, le travail. Donc, pour moi et pour James, c'est très important que nos forces canadiennes soient prêtes au combat, qu'il y ait un financement qui soit prévisible à long terme et que les gens, les militaires, arrêtent d'être en attente toujours des décisions politiques pour savoir où aller. Parce que vous savez, vous avez 68 000 hommes et femmes en uniforme dans les forces canadiennes régulières. Ces gens-là doivent savoir vers où aller pour les 10, 15, 20 prochaines années. Le livre blanc qui va être préparé par le gouvernement ne doit pas avoir simplement des éléments qui sont... Euh, d'idéologie libérale, mais vraiment être fait pour les Canadiens, l'ensemble des Canadiens et, et, de, et le souhait des Canadiens. Donc, pour nous, euh, c'est important que nos hommes et femmes en uniforme soient bien habillés, soient bien entraînés, prêts au combat et ne pas simplement suivre l'idéologie de fausses missions de paix des Nations unies. Merci.